Hi, everybody. Welcome to Wedcast, part of the C Squared Radio Podcast Network. And we're going to start off this week's episode with a, a little bit of a mea culpa, an apology on, on, on my part. And you might have noticed last week with the episode, which, by the way, got a great uh, response. And we want to thank Michelle again for taking some time out. Michelle was actually the first person to, uh, when I was looking for interviewers, she was, was the first person to, to step up and say, yeah, sure, I'll do it. Um, totally unproven concept, unproven podcast. I didn't have thousands of listeners that I could go to her and, and say, here you go. I had an idea. And she was the first one to, to step up and, and say, yes, yeah. she wasn't the first one that we recorded. Um, but she was the first one that said yes. And that's why she was the, the debut episode. Plus it was, it was an entertaining podcast. I had a great time uh, talking with her and, and I hope you enjoyed listening to it as well. But now on to the, the reason why we're doing this uh, opening here and we didn't have the normal uh, intro. In that first episode, we mentioned the original name of the, the podcast, Bridecast. When I started this podcast, or first formulated the idea for the podcast five years ago, I came up with the term Bridecast because to me it sounded like broadcast. And I like clever things. Years later, before I've ever recorded any of the episodes, I, I later learned that the, the title might not have been everything that I it, hoped it would be. And I'm a member of an organization, the Association of Bridal Consultants. I'm on the steering committee for my local networking group. And in the meeting, it was explained to me that the term bridal, especially when referring kind of generically to, to weddings, can be at best not 100% inclusive, at worst can actually be offensive to some. Weddings today don't just deal with brides. They don't deal with brides and grooms. They're, they're in this, this new world that we're living in. They're all inclusive. And personally, my, my personal feelings are that love is love and everybody should have the opportunity to enjoy uh, a wedding. And as a, a company, we want to be inclusive as well. And so the second I hit submit, it was like, you know, you say those words and you see them come out of your mouth and you just want to grab them and put them back in your pocket and forget they never existed. That's literally what happened. The second I hit submit, it was like, oh, oh no. Uh, and so I quickly changed the verbiage on the, the anchor site, on c radio.com, c events.com, and all of the posts and, and everything. I changed it from broadcast to webcast because I wanted it to be more inclusive. I didn't want to um, exclude any one segment or, or anything like like that because that's not who I am and that's not what my company is all about. I did do a in the post on cscoreevents.com in the vlog section I did at the bottom I did explain how in the episode you hear it referred to as broadcast but we're now webcast and I'm going to take this opportunity to uh, explain it as well moving forward the, the title of the show is now webcast. Um, we're having a new intro recorded. We're not going to use the, the old one. Um, and so now I had a decision to make about not only the first interview that I did with Michelle, but also the subsequent interviews that I did. Uh, I, 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 four, five, or six I had in the canon. I don't know how many actually were f actually in the interview we say broadcast, but I didn't want to I didn't want to, to just throw them away or, or I didn't want to have to record them. These pros are, are very busy and were very gracious to to give me their time to record these. And I didn't want to just throw them away. I wanted to use them. So that's why I'm explaining now that that in the next few podcasts, you may hear the term broadcast. And I apologize for that. Uh, webcast is what we're, we're doing moving forward. Kind of rolling on the fly and... and, and moving things along. And and in that spirit, the original plan for this week's episode has also changed. I originally was going to interview an officiant and we're going to put that, we're going to push that down because I recently did, one of the last interviews I did was with uh, Crystal McNeil, who is the general manager of Galway Downs. Uh, and Galway Downs is a wedding venue that is managed by Wedgwood Weddings. We did a great interview, and in it, we talked a lot about the global pandemic, pandemic, COVID nineteen, coronavirus, whatever, whatever you want to call it. And 
it's very topical to what's going on. You know, uh, again, to put things in context, we are currently in May of 2020, and, and the world in the wedding business is on pause because of the pandemic. I know that we are going to get out of this. We're going to move forward. And, and I, I may have even mentioned this last uh, episode in my intro, but because of the topicality of this episode, I wanted to move it forward and get it right away. I know that this podcast, the, the second you put something on the internet, it lives forever. And that people may be dis, uh, stumbling upon this podcast years from now and they may go, wow, what's, what's she talking about? refunds and and you know what this company's doing and 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 steps they're taking and and it probably won't apply to your situation but again she she was speaking what she knew and Wedgwood Weddings actually has done a really good job of stepping up to the plate and taking care of its its couples and and at a time when they may not have necessarily had to. Um, and it certainly wasn't a great business decision, but it was a personal decision. It was a decision from a CEO who loves weddings and is running a very wedding centric company. And because of that, I decided let's just, let's move it forward. Let's get it out as soon as possible and let it live there. And so if you're, again, if you're stumbling upon this years from now, um, we have moved beyond this. We have, we have come out of it and are currently working weddings and, uh, enjoying life and, and having fun. So enjoy this week's episode. Crystal McNeil gives us a great interview, tells us about her life. The, the, the cool thing about having Crystal on is because she represents or represented a lot of different portions of the wedding uh, process. She started off as a personal coordinator and then moved to a venue coordinator, then moved into sales for a venue, and now finally, uh, as the general manager, runs the venue. And we get into a lot of that as we go along. So enjoy this week's interview with Crystal McNeil, general manager of Wedgwood Weddings Galway Downs. Hi, Crystal. How are you doing? Great, Mike. How are you? I'm fabulous. Thank you for, for joining us here. And now uh, let's take a, a moment and introduce yourself to the listeners. Let them know who you are, what you do, um, and how you got to, to where you are. Okay, it's kind of a long story. So um, currently, I am a general manager of a wedding venue in Temecula called uh, Galway Downs. I work for a company called Wedgwood. I started my career in about 2004. Um, I was a, and you, Mike, you probably don't even know this. I was a waitress at Claim Jumper in Carlsbad for about seven years. And I had a woman that came in on a regular basis with her son. And about three years in, she came in one day right after in between Christmas and New Year's and she put her business card on the table. Um, I didn't even know what she did. And she said, I'd like for you to come work for me. I'll teach you everything I know. And she was a wedding planner. She owns uh, Details Defined, which she's kind of phasing out of weddings. But And she taught me everything I know for the next several years I worked with her. We did um, a lot of high-end weddings. We, you know, at the time, um, like Four Seasons Aviara was a, a big hit. So we were at Four Seasons a lot. We did some traveling to Cabo and um, Carmel and did some destination weddings. Um, so I kind of started backwards. A lot of people start at the venue and go out into coordination. And I started in coordination and then um, went into the venue scene. Um, so I was at Wilson Creek from 2010 to 2013 as a wedding coordinator. And then in 2013, I transitioned um, to Temecula Creek End as a catering sales manager. And I was there until 2017. And then 2017 until now, which it's, um, so, uh, I don't know the date, May 7th, maybe, 2020. I'm the general manager to go way down. And that was uh, one of the cool things and one of the reasons I wanted to have you on the show is because you did have such a wide variety of experiences and you've kind of, not only have you been on the personal side, which I, I, I did know about 
you being a personal coordinator, I didn't know how you you got into it. Um, so that's kind of a cool uh, story. Um, but you've been on the personal coordinator side, you've been on the venue side, but you've also, you know, from the venue standpoint, you've been on the boots on the ground coordinator side, you've been on the sales side. And now for, for lack of a better w- word, you you run Galway Downs and, and we'll get into the, into the kind of the structure and, and we'll explain a little bit about Wedgwood does, but as a general manager, you're kind of the, the, you know, the, the one in charge of the day-to-day operations of the venue. Yes, I am. I am. It took me a while to transition at the beginning. I would look around and I would think, hey, who makes that decision? Oh yeah, I do. And so it took me a couple of months to transition and realize that I am the one that makes those decisions and now I'm pretty comfortable with it. Well, it, and in the time that I've known you, you've always been you're 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 very capable of controlling things and 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 uh, and and I don't mean that in in a bad way, but you're very capable of leading and and, <laughs> and <laughs> you're very capable of controlling. You are a very controlling person. Uh, what what well, thanks, what <laughs> what they don't tell you, uh, Crystal, is these tend to be event session where I just get all my frustrations out on the person that I'm that I'm listening to. No, uh, controlling in a, in a good way. You're able to not necessarily control people, but you're able to control the the situation. And I know even from talking with. Um, some of your employees uh, or people that work with you because they're not technically your employees, um, they say the same thing, that you are very good about taking a situation in and finding the best way to to handle it. So that is, that is something. And I remember um, when you went, when you made the first announcement, um, you and I worked... Uh, we didn't necessarily because at Temecula Creek and you were on the sales side, and I of course was on on the the DJing the events. But we worked a lot together, and we would see each other a lot. And certainly, I do a lot of employee events for Temecula Creek. And and then just before their employee party, you announced you were you were leaving, and and I was I was crushed. How am I? Uh, I you know, and and I kind of knew where you were going. And we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, but I'm like, I'm not going to get to see Crystal again because you are are without a doubt, you're one of my favorite people because you you've got you've got that both Aww. that you've got that no nonsense. Uh, stuff needs to get done, but you've also got a very good personality and stories that we're not going to go into in, in here in the, the podcast <laughs> are, are, are some of my fondest memories with you. Um, how... Which one you're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of people listening now that are going, I know what he's talking about. Um, and all I'm yeah. going to say is it involved Montel Jordan. And that, and just now people are going to be like, what? Um <laughs> from a personal side, what was it like going from the personal coordinator onto the the venue side? So, you know, I, when I went to Wilson Creek, Wilson Creek is, you know, very, they do the true venue coordinator. And so it wasn't a super hard transition for me. Um, you know, I, when I was, you know, working for a private coordinator, um, I you know, didn't have, I, I wasn't married. I, I didn't have any kids. And so when I transitioned to a venue, um, actually three days after I, I started at Wilson Creek, I found out I was pregnant with my first child. So for me, moving to the venue, it was more, uh, for me personally, it was more of a stability. It was more knowing what, knowing what my day looked like going to the same office and having a routine. And, you know, at that stage in my life, I, I really needed that routine. Um, and just having a home and kind of creating a home and, ha- you know, creating the same vendors that you work with. I loved private coordination, but I love use much more. Um, I, you know, it's just my personal preference. So for me, it was an easier transition. Um, because I really liked the stability. I really liked to know when my paycheck was coming, what it was going to be. I really liked um, having, you know, multiple, you know, multiple people that I work with on a regular basis. I'm super social. So I liked having that as well, instead of going to an office with maybe, you know, when I worked for a private coordinator, um, I would maybe work from home or I would work in the office by myself. And so, you know, um, at a venue, it's much more social. There's more going on. Um, it's more active. It's more consistent. So I love it. I, I get it. I, I myself am a, am a creature of habit. And that's one of the reasons why I love 
uh, my, the relationships that I have with the different venues because I love going in and knowing the people that I'm going to be working with, um, having uh, some form of personal connection with them, but also knowing the ins and outs, where I load in, where I, um, you know, where I, I set up, where I, where I plug in and, and, and different things like that. And then I also get the social aspect because as a business owner and, and a, a sole proprietor, you know, there, and yes, I share an office with, with a, a couple other vendors, but nine times out of 10, it's me in the office by myself until the couple comes in. And then it's like, Oh yes, let's sit here and talk and chat and let's talk about your wedding. And, and I too, uh-huh. I, and, and before I got an office, I used to love, I, I didn't mind meeting at Starbucks. And the reason I didn't mind is because there was so, there was an energy about the place. There was, uh, you know, people minding their own business, doing their own thing, but there was just a buzz and, and you could feel it. Whereas when you come into yeah. an empty office, it's, it's, it's gone. So empty. I, 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 yeah. I, I totally get that. And then, you know, obviously there's the, there, there's the stability of coming in, um, and, and knowing what you've got going on and, and, um, uh, knowing where the pay is coming from and, and what it is. So I, I, I totally get that. But then there's also the freedom. Um, what yeah. was it like going from, because at Wilson Creek, you were very much a more of the traditional wedding coordinator in the sense that you were you were handling a lot of different aspects of the actual um, function of the uh, wedding, yes. the execution of the wedding, to moving into sales. Yep. So funny story. I... Um... When I decided to make the change, I I was interviewing with um, Elaine Bartolome, who was my direct supervisor at Mexico Cookin, who I'm sure a lot of you know. And in the interview, she was telling me that it was only sales. <laughs> and we're interviewing and I'm like, you know, Elaine, I, I don't really think that's what I want to do. I, I don't really want to do just sales. That's not, I, I like the coordination side. And she, it, we're interviewing. And I, you know, had seen her at functions, but I didn't know her. And she convinced me in the interview that I would enjoy it even more because I got to sell them on the property and I got to be excited with them. But then I also, you know, my kids were growing up then. So I wasn't there later. You know, when I was at Wilson Creek, I was there with you till you what, till you cut your wedding cake. And so transitioning to Temecula Creek End, you know, I had a more, you know, I had more of a steady schedule. Um, and so that was nice. And so I did enjoy it. I got to, you know, my husband, he always says I, I sell the dream. So I got to sell them their wedding dream. And I got to paint that picture. And I got to live through that exciting moment of them picking a venue and, you know, walking down to the stone house and getting over the bridge. I had so many brides cry. And, and so I, I got to go through that motion with them. And I still did, you know, when there was a transition or someone needed time off, I still would step into that role as, as the catering manager. But, you know, then I transitioned to sales and, and I enjoyed that more than the day to day coordinating of weddings. And, you know, I'm getting older. And so, you know, I, I'm not the same age as, as most of the brides anymore. So it was kind of a nice transition to go into the sales part and to be able to really bond with them and their mom you know, um, painting this picture of their perfect wedding day. The, the person who had your job, I'm not sure if it was directly before you or if it was a couple, uh, sales managers before you, but her and I were talking and we were chatting about how she would get the outrageous ideas that the brides would like, Hey, can we land a helicopter here on the, uh, the uh, putting green next to the the stone house and and oh uh-huh. sure uh-huh. and so she described it as she sold the dream and then passed it off to yeah. the the actual coordinator who had to live the nightmare. Yeah, I I was pretty good because I had coordinated before and so I was pretty good at, at not overselling the dream and making sure that I, it was very clear and the ones that were a little more complicated I would then coordinate through, um, you know, um, but. You know, I loved working at TCI as a sales manager. I loved it. I got to go to work and sell the dream every day. And I remember when you posted that you were you were moving on, and and there was a part of me that's like, because I I knew that you liked um, being at TCI, and and I was like, well, wow, that's and and moving in the the business is is nothing new. It happens all all the time. So it's not like I, I expected you to be chained to to TCI. But then I found that you were offered the general manager at Galway Downs <laughs> for Wedgwood. And I'm like, well, 
duh, that's 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 a no no brainer. So what is it like going from? So let's kind of take the career leap. Start as a personal coordinator. Yeah. Um, hands in every part of the wedding to the sales aspect where hands in that part of the wedding to now overseeing the entire wedding operation. Yeah. So, um, I'm probably in my favorite part of my career. I mean, not right now dealing with COVID we'll say that, but as far as, you know, being a general manager, um, I, you know, it, it was a little bit of a hard transition and I had to really, you know, they actually, a recruiter reached out to me and um, on LinkedIn that works uh, a Wedgwood recruiter. And I thought, oh, it's been three weeks. They've already hired someone. And, and I, you know, started the correspondence. And I think from my first interview to my job offer, it was 10 days. Um, I enjoy it. I, 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 I love it. I get to, I, you know, I'm older than my team. A lot of my team are in their, you know, late twenties. And so I get to nurture my team and help them grow and help them learn um, the things that I've learned along the way. And so now I'm their mentor and, you know, and I also still have a great mentor in my regional manager. He's phenomenal. And then I have, you know, I've developed relationships with other GMs at other properties. Um, and so that's, been really helpful as well. Um, you know, I've learned, I've learned a lot. I've learned, you know, when you're in sales, you, you're not learning about the budgets and, you know, p ls and you're not managing your own budget. You're just selling and you're hoping you hit your numbers and, you know, you've got goals and you're driven. And now um, I have to help my drive my sales team and manage, you know, my banquet staff and my kitchen staff. And, um, you know, my husband's a chef, so he helps me with that aspect, to, you know, if I have questions about the kitchen. Um, so I'm lucky I get to talk shop at home with my husband a lot because we understand each other's careers. But I love working for Wedgwood. Um, it's a great, great company. Um, and I'm so happy that I've made the move that I've made. And we're going to get into a little more about Wedgwood and, and what it is they, okay. they've they done. Um, and I don't want to necessarily date um, the podcast because there will be people who may pick this up years down the road. Um, you know, my mom, yeah. six years from now, may stumble upon podcasts and be like, oh, hey, that's my son. And, and she may listen to it. But you're right. Yeah. And, and because I do have a little bit of a relationship with, with Wedgwood, and I do think it is worth pointing out how they kind of stepped up to the plate. Tell me a little bit about their response. What 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 it is that that okay. what did they do that that others weren't, for lack of a better term? So first and foremost, I mean, as a company, yes, we have furloughed from some salespeople, but all in all, we still have a strong sales presence. So our clients can still at all properties, our clients still have, you know, um, someone available on the sales team to talk through, you know, whereas other venues have let their sales teams go and maybe they only have the general manager of a hotel and they aren't able to talk to the person that they've been talking to this whole process. Um, so right away, so that's kind of one of the biggest things. And so, you know, I still have sales team working. I'm still working. Um, Right away, what we did is we um, let our march through um, the end of April, through April 30th, because that's when the initial stay at home order um, was put out. Um, we reached out to all of our couples. Our CEO, Bill Zaruka, who is spectacular, sent out a video to all of our couples saying, we're here for you. We'll let you move your wedding date to any wedge would you want to anytime you want to. And we will move your date. Um, they also gave them an, an incentive for moving, which was very generous. Um, and then we've slowly progressed through and allowed people to move. And we're being flexible with our couples on, you know, when they can move. In addition, couples, if they, you know, had paid their payment right away, if they were 100% paid and their wedding was in three days and we're telling them we can't pay, we, we, we can't do your wedding. We immediately gave them 50% back knowing that, you know, they're going to have to pay that to us down the line, but we immediately gave them 50% back. Um, you know, Wedgwood also has a blog that, you know, gives couples ideas on how to postpone and, you know, what that looks like. Um, you know, 
the response has been really great. Um, for the most part, our couples have been fantastic and, you know, thankful that we're, that we're allowing them to move. And for, for the listeners that, that don't know, Wedgwood is, um, it's kind of like a franchise and they, they manage a bunch of different properties, but the thing that they're known for, uh, is mm -hmm. their all inclusive packages. So you come to Wedgwood and you, you can get, and I say can because couples don't, the, the, the misnomer is that the couples have to, um, use uh -huh. the, the vendors that are including the package and they don't, they can opt out of that. Um, but they can come and get, you know, their, their, obviously the venue, the officiant, the invitations, the florals, the photo booth, the DJ, um, all, all included and vendors who are not part of that can get a little, well, you're ruining the business and, and yada, yada, yada. And, and that's where I, I say that, you know, I had that, that mindset, as as well i was one of those as wedgwood is ruining the 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 wedding industry right up until you got there and i was put on the package no i'm just kidding so, <laughs> so, so uh that's exactly how it it worked um but yeah from from a business standpoint it can be scary when when there's a, an entity out there that's very popular and gaining traction and it's coming into it could potentially hurt your space, but I've kind of always looked at it like, you know, uh, a, a bride getting married at wedge, uh, not a Wedgwood venue may not necessarily be my bride. It turns out that some are, um, and we've got a, a pretty good relationship. Uh, that's a segue into, um, talk about the Wedgwood philosophy. They're, they're kind of approach to weddings, huh? you know, um, not necessarily just the one stop all, but the thing that I've noticed in my relationship with them is it is very, wedding centric. Yes. So, you know, we've been in business since 1986. We are family owned. Um, and, you know, our CEO is the son, his dad started the business and his dad's still very much involved. Um, it's a great company with great values. And, you know, one of, one of the core values is do the right thing. And so literally everyone in our company lives by that value of do the right thing. And, you know, they've also coined a term val servenience, which means value, service, and convenience. So the whole idea behind Wedgwood packages is really, you know, for the convenience of our clients, right? So for instance, right now with this, with this move, you know, with people having to move their wedding dates, you know, we do have some couples that like hired an outside coordinator. So they've removed all of our vendors and, and they, and for, in order for them to move their wedding date, you know, they have to reach out to five to 10 different vendors to confirm that they're available. Well, our clients that have gone with our package, they just say, we want to move to this wedding date. And we say, great, we handle all part. So we communicate to the vendors, the client doesn't have to reach out and, and talk to those multiple different vendors to find out if they're available for their date. So we really provide a, a great value to our clients and a great convenience as well. You know, um, some couples, you know, the couples that come to us, they like the idea that they don't have to go through, you know, an interview 10 floors to figure out the one that they want. We say, okay, we've got two floors and we kind of assign them by date and we say, here's your florist and it's built into the package. Uh, you know, they can upgrade, they can do whatever they want with the florist basically, you know, and we manage a majority of the invoicing, you know, with our DJs, we manage the invoicing, the client pays us and we pay the DJ. So the client doesn't have to worry about, you know, did I pay this person? Did I pay this person? So it's extremely convenient for the clients. And then, you know, we vetted, you know, like, for instance, when I was at Tomek to the Creek Inn, um, you know, we did really vet the vendor list, but there was, I mean, at one point, oh, come on, Crystal, decide, you, you, I think, Crystal, you let me on the vendor list. No, actually, that's, that's not true. Oh, I was on the vendor list before it. you got there. You were on before I was. Yes, you were, you were. But at one point, I think we had like nine DJs. And that's, so much for, you know, it, it's a lot of decisions for couples to make. Now, some couples love that, but other couples want it to just be easy. And we also do a lot of the planning with them. You know, um, like we give them a wedding planning binder when they book that kind of walks them through what it's going to look like. We set up 
when they book, we set a meet a wedding planning meeting four months before their wedding. We and then you know where we go over everything, and there's a tab in the binder that you know has all the details that we're going to go over at that meeting. And then we have a details phone call six weeks before the wedding, and that's where we button up any TBDs or any changes that they want. And then their final meetings ten business days before. So immediately when they book, we're scheduling three meetings with them. Um, and also one thing that I really like that Wedgwood does um, is. In our sales office, you know, it's not like, I mean, people can absolutely request to work with somebody, but I have um, four people in my sales office and they all do, they all do everything. And so it, there's someone in the office seven days a week where when I, when I was at Wilson Creek, for instance, someone was only working with me and they emailed me, they didn't email the office. And so if I was off or if I went on vacation, they would have to wait to hear back from me. Whereas, you know, Wedgwood, we, everybody does everything. So someone's in the office seven days a week, answering your phone calls, your emails, and you get to know the whole team. And then it's also great too, because if one of my team members wants to take a vacation and they have, they're coordinating a wedding, it's not like that. We don't assign who's coordinating it until about a month out. And most people are okay with it and people can absolutely make a request, but the, you know, if they, you know, book and Alex goes on vacation and he's not there for their wedding, then they know ahead of time, he might not be there. And then it's not so disappointing to them. Or if somebody leaves, you know, then it's like devastating. If a catering manager leaves, like when I was at Temecula Creek End, the people would be devastated. And now we, we kind of eliminated that whole process. And from a vendor standpoint, I actually don't like that because, you know, when I get an email and I want to make a sarcastic comment back, I've got to remember that whoever's it, like Diana may not Diana who appreciates sarcasm, uh, you know, may not answer that email. It may be Michaela who who does not appreciate, or it may be you know Alex who has a very different <laughs> sense of humor. So maybe we'll work out some code so that I can get my uh, you know my entertainment in there as as well. In fact, I actually just uh, responded to an email. Um, yeah. from Alex as well. Um, I know deep down in my heart that Wedgwood is not a wedding factory, but that's the term that's, that's, that's thrown about there. Mm -hmm. There is a similarity to, to everything. You know, I, I know looking through the Instagrams, you'll get comments like, why do you only feature this photographer? And, and I know the answer, um, because right. the photographer is part of your package. So, so they're there a lot, but how has Wedgwood kind of worked to, eliminate the term, not necessarily eliminate the term wedding factory, but, but let people know that it doesn't apply to them. I, you know, that's kind of a hard question to answer. I mean, we, you know, at my property alone, we do about 220 weddings a year, but here's the thing we do. We're doing one wedding a day. So it's not like, you know, we've got a wedding in the morning, a wedding at night, you know, we, we do one wedding a day. And on that day, we're super, we're, overly focused on that couple. So I think that, I think that anyone, you know, like when I worked at Wilson Creek, you know, they were doing multiple weddings and people at the time said they were a wedding factory, you know, the Hotel Dell, people say they're a factory. So I think that if anybody does a lot of weddings and are wedding centric, then they're coined a wedding factory. And I think that that's just, um, you know, I think that that's just an easy, an easy way to describe something. You know, Wedgwood is a wedding company where like Wilson Creek is a winery and they do weddings and Temecula Creek Inn is a hotel and golf course and they do weddings and Wedgwood only for, I mean, for the most part only does weddings as a company. So I think that, I don't know that there's really a way to get around that because that's the easiest way for people to describe it that don't really understand the how the company works and how the property works. Well, I think you hit the nail on the head when you said uh, Wedgwood only does one wedding a, a day. I mean, I remember early on in my career uh, venues or ven well multiple venues in Orange County that do multiple weddings in a day. I remember showing up to a venue once and the the D my wedding starts in an hour because the venue only gave you an hour to to set up. And the huh. DJ is still breaking down and I, I'm in there helping him wrap cables to get out. And that's, yes. in, in my mind, that's always a wedding factory is just going to churn them out. One wedding a day is not, right. um, I mean, you do 212 Turning weddings, but, but it's not, it's not your fault that couples want to get married on a Thursday <laughs> or a Monday or, or whatever. Um, it, or that's a not, Tuesday. exactly. That's not, that's not your fault. You've kind of created the environment where, 
um, couples who want to get married on a on a non traditional date can and still be taken taken care of and not necessarily because you know. Uh, I don't want it, this to seem like I'm throwing Temecula Creek in under the butt. Will, will you? I was going to say we'll use Pechanga, but Pechanga owns Temecula Creek in. But you, you, Wilson Creek, we'll go to Wilson Creek because I don't think if they listen to this, they'll get offended by what I'm about to say. Wilson Creek is a winery, and and that is their the main thrust of of their um, business. And when you're having your your wedding on a Tuesday, there may be a lot of other winery related events going on that day. Maybe they got someone in the courtyard playing music or something like that. Whereas at, at Wedgwood, uh, that's not a situation. If you're getting married on a Tuesday, there's no difference between it and a Saturday other than, than the fact that it's a Tuesday. You're not dealing with, you know, uh, people there wine tasting or, or, you know, a dog running through your ceremony because his owners um, let, him, let him loose. That's the advantage that, that a wedding specific exactly. venue has that that other places exactly. don't necessarily have exactly like i you know we don't have to worry about what anybody else is doing because we are only doing weddings i mean some of the other venues have gone and stuff some of the other wedgwoods but my venue in particular you know we do one wedding a day and we do weddings um you know we do like Literally, we have one fundraiser that we work with twice a year, and that's Semper Fi Fund, and my team loves them. And so we do that fundraiser, and we do a handful of holiday parties. But other than that, we do weddings. And so, you know, since we only do weddings, I'm going to say we do them pretty damn well. You know, um, we have a system, and my banquet staff, they're not transitioning from a wedding to a luncheon to a corporate event. You know, they do weddings, and they you know so that's kind of the advantage of you know doing only weddings is that we've really perfected our you know we've really honed in and perfected our craft and you know it's something that we do really well and and if i can kind of you know give you uh uh and and i don't have a um Galway Downs is the only Wedgwood that I that I work with right now, um, so I don't have as much experience company wide. But I know uh, certainly at 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 Galway, it, it's not cookie cutter. It doesn't it doesn't seem it doesn't seem like this is the same old same old. Even though the the team knows what they're doing and they they kind of have their routine, it 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 always feels special and 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 unique. And that's one of the the things that I that I like about it. Yeah, I, I agree. You know, most weddings look different. There's different things happening. And, um, you know, for, yeah, we, it's not the same. When you were at Temecula Creek Inn or Wilson Creek, for that matter, all-inclusive packages are not a new thing, but they were popping up. What were your thoughts on them? <laughs> Do you really want to know? Um, so I was not a fan. And to be honest, I was not a fan in any stretch of the imagination of the present company that I work for. So I understand where a lot of people have those negative views. Um, so, you know, if I had someone that was looking at an all-inclusive venue and they were, you know, with me at Smecula Creek Inn, I would think, oh, they don't have a budget. That's kind of where my mind would go. Um and this was before Galway Downs came into the picture. Um, I, I wasn't a fan and I, I had similar feelings to, you know, as you did before you got involved. And as a matter of fact, when I, you know, I was talking with Wedgwood about coming on board, I called Leah, um, who is a photographer with Wedgwood. And I asked her what are her thoughts and she had nothing but good things to say. And, our, and then I called Dominica and uh, Dominica, same thing, had nothing but positive things to say. And so, you know, I'm glad that I made this decision and, and I haven't looked back. And and that was pretty much why I, I asked the question, because that was the same thing I had, is I had this negative reaction and then I, I got in there. And, and for me, part of it was it, the negative reac reaction kind of tapered off. I, I got into it because more the point here is now all of a sudden there's a surge in all inclusive packages. And I, and I find it funny that those that originally, um, you know, bashed against them are now embracing them because brides like yes. 
some brides like some brides want to plan every last detail of their weddings and some brides uh or i should say some couples i i shouldn't use the the term bride all the time some couples want to just throw someone write someone a check and show up and have everything be done yes and and that's what you know i our our inquiries that come in you know the, the you know a lot of times what you know we've got like a questionnaire and most of the time it says they were drawn to our packages and you know and so couples do like that you know think about it think about it like i've been doing weddings since 2004 you've been doing weddings for what 15 16 years and so for us 19. it's like old hat you know 19 years okay 19 so you know for us it's old hat right like we know what to expect but for some people i mean when i i've had brides that when i worked at wilson creek i had a bride that had literally never been to another wedding never been to her wedding before her so she had no idea what to expect now that's an extreme case but you know they've never been married before they don't know what to do and so the raw of wedgwood is we like map it all out for them and make it super easy and super user friendly and that that bride is exactly why places like uh like wedgwood uh, and others that are going to all inclusive packages. That's that's the advantage that they're getting now. Again, there are brides that want, you know, uh, or couples that want every little detail to be unique to them, and they necessarily wouldn't wouldn't gravitate towards a Wedgwood, um, although they certainly they certainly could. Um, but that's kind of where the yeah this... we do have. Uh, I mean, we do have couples that come in, and they you know they take everything out of the package and they bring in, you know, everything of their own and they can absolutely do that. You know, um, they, you know, we've got a, our classic package that basically only includes the DJ and nothing else, you know, um, and they can remove the DJ. So, you know, they can, we are totally flexible. They can change their package. And, you know, that's one of the nice things is that, you know, when they're booking, they're not having to pick a menu or what menu package they want to go into because all of our menu packages are pretty much the same and they can change once they book. If they book in one of our packages, they can change to another package. And so we're very flexible. And I will say this, you know, I, at my property, my sales team, I've got, I've got four sales team members. And this is just to tell you what a great company Wedgwood is to work for. Three of them hit their five years of working for the company this year, one of them hit, is hitting her tenure. Like, I've never worked at a venue with people there that had that much long that much longevity. Yeah, that's not something that you see every every day. Usually, it's, no. it's it, there. There are more uh, people in the business who have the resume of, oh, I've been at this, especially at a lot of the different wineries where they've been to this place, this place, this place, and this place. So that does that does speak to a company that they 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 are able to keep their employees. For, for that length of time. So tell me a little bit about the differences because you've got the idea or you've got the background in the personal coordinator and the, the venue coordinator. What are the, what are the, mm-hmm. the differences? There always seems to be a constant battle but between the two. And, yeah. and as an outsider, I'm sitting there going, you both want the same end result. Why, why is this, this working process not smoother than it is? So, you know, I'll tell you, like, funny, even though when I came from the world of coordination, when I worked at Wilson Creek, because I did the coordination on site, if they had an outside planner, a lot of times, they would come in and throw their weight around and, you know, just be so pushy. And I would, and I would be like, you're coming into my house, calm down. Um, And, you know, at TCI, obviously, it was a whole different story. And, you know, my team, now they kind of, you know, Peter on they like it but it's not their favorite um and so I think that the biggest difference is you know say that like currently at Wedgwood we do a lot of the help you with a lot of the planning but someone who definitely needs a planner at Wedgwood is like you know those couples that want help with the design or going to their appointments you know a venue coordinator is not going to go to your appointments with you and their you know a venue coordinator's timeline is very generic it's going to start with your ceremony and go into like very minimal things. It's not going to carve out when you're doing, you know, when you're bustling your dress. Um, most venues don't 
help with the bustling. However, my particular venue, Alex is the best bustler I know. Um, and so my venue does help with bustling, but most venue coordinators aren't going to help you bustle, aren't going to help, you know, the brides bustle their dress or if they have a dress change. Um, you know, when I did private coordination, I was there with, you know, when the bride was taking photos, I usually was on bridal duty. So I would walk around with the couple while they were taking photos with the photographer and I would hold the bride's stuff for her and I would help her with her dress, you know, cause usually it's a big, huge dress. I would help with the dress. And if, you know, she needed touch-ups or if her veil was falling out, if her hair and makeup didn't stay, then I would help, you know, adjust her veil. I would help the photographer adjust. I would carry the bride's timeline of what photos she wanted and make sure that, you know, if dad was needed, dad was there. So if you don't have a, you know, if you don't have a private coordinator, they're not helping you through your photo process. And usually it's the photographer and one other person. So they're not running around finding your dad for you. So that's a huge thing is, is the photo part. Um, also, you know, the day of the wedding, say that the bride, um, a bridesmaid was wearing, you know, forgets deodorant. Well, guess what? The venue coordinator is not going to the store to get you deodorant, but if you have a private coordinator, they're going to the store to get you whatever the heck you need. So um, a venue, you know, on the day of a private coordinator, a personal coordinator or a personal planner is going to be much more hands-on. They're there with you all day long. They're checking in on you, whereas a venue coordinator's got other things to do with the venue. So they're going to check in on you a couple times, but they're not there really doing anything for the, for the bride or for the groom. Um, and then, you know, most venues, the, the, uh, the venue coordinator is leaving, you know, sometimes or sometime around dinner service and they're not managing that timeline for you. Whereas if you have a, a planner, they're going to manage that whole timeline for you. They're going to make sure they're going to remind dad that it's almost time for his toast. They're going to remind you, okay, you're, you know, they're going to be managing your timeline for you all night. Like, Hey, just a reminder, your first dance is in 15 minutes. Are you ready? Okay. Let me find your dad. You know, let me find your groom. Let me make sure the DJ knows. Let me make sure the banquet captain knows. So they're facilitating all I think, Mike, you can, if they don't have a coordinator, then you're pretty much doing that with the banquet captain. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of those, those roles. Hello? Okay. A lot of those roles fall on, um, on us. If we, if, if it's not there and, you know, you heard it here first, uh, personal planners and personal coordinators keep deodorant as part of your emergency kit. Cause you, you never know when, <laughs> when you're, you're going to need it. Look, if, if you are a personal coordinator or planner and that is the only golden nugget of many that we've given out today, then this podcast is worth a thumbs up or subscribe at the very, the very least. You, you talked about, absolutely. you talked about stepping back into the role and it, it's funny um, because that was one of the things that, um, that I was going to, going to talk about with you or, and because I remember last year, uh, because of schedule, I think it was a Monday wedding at, at, at Galway where you're like, guess who you're coordinating Mike, me. And you and I met at Temecula Creek Inn where you were the sales manager. We didn't coordinate, although actually a couple times at, at Temecula Creek Inn, you did have to step in. What's that like stepping back in after you've been out for, for some time? Um, it's like old hat. I can step back in and, you know, do the ceremony rehearsal and, and it, I like it and it's exciting. And my team, you know, um, my sales team, they are very particular about the way they do things. So sometimes they're like, boss, you forgot to do this. Boss, did you do this? So I've got constant little reminders. Um, but you know, I, since I've been there, I think I've coordinated, uh, maybe two, maybe three weddings. Um, and it's fun still. I enjoy it. I like to have that connection with the couples because I don't have a lot of connection with the couples. So, I mean, it was it was like riding a bike. I and it's funny you mentioned how they they have their ways of how they like to do things. I think that was the biggest learning curve for me coming into um, Wedgwood. Is is I have been doing this for a long time. Nineteen years. I started when I was uh, five. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I've got this wealth of experience and it's hard for, for someone else to come in and tell, or it's hard for me to take someone else coming in and telling me, well, this is how we, we, this is how we do it. 
Um, and, and it's person to person. So if I'm working with, with one coordinator, I'm like, okay, this is how they like things to be done. If I'm working with this coordinator, this is how they like, uh, things to be done. And going back to the, the personal coordinator question, cause you and I talked about this at, at one point in time when I don't want to say when you're used to doing things a certain way, but when you've got a flow and a, a methodology to your approach that works, sometimes adding an outsider to that can throw a, a, a monkey wrench into, into the works. And so I, I, again, as an outsider, not part of the venue personal coordinator fight, I, I see both sides. I can see the, the personal coordinator yeah. going, well, we're just there to, to make everybody's life easier. And then I can see the personal court or the venue coordinator going, well, you know, we've, this is how, I, I don't want to use the word, this is how we do things, although that's the word that they'll throw out. Well, this is how we do things. But it's it's very much, you know, you've got a methodology. You've got an approach that uh-huh. that two things and, and adding a second person to that changes things. Like I had to relearn how, how I had to approach a very different style of timeline. And luckily, just before I, I got into Wedgwood, I started working with Michelle of Michelle Garibay Events. And Michelle Garibay sat me down and said, you know, look, yes, the way you do things can work, but it's not the only way things work. And uh-huh. so coming into uh-huh. to Wedgwood, I already had this open mind of like, we're just going to do it this way and it's going to work and I'm going to be able to, to, to make it work. And it did. You know, we, we survived. And, and so I, I think that's the flexibility that that, you know, I've learned and, and I get from from your staff as well. You know, it's not like if I do things a little bit differently, I, I'm i going to get smacked. You know, there are times where I've had a bride come to me and say, you know, this is how they they scheduled it. But I think I might want to do things this way. And I'm like, well, that's fine, you know, and, and let them know that they're going to be just as receptive as as I am. Absolutely. <clears throat> Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they're, you know, it, you know, we, I mean, for instance, we have, you know, there's a planner that sometimes comes to works at our venue, not a Temecula one, I'll just say that. And she'll tell the clients something that's about our package that's not accurate. And so we're like, what are you, what are you talking about? We do include the cakes, not for cake cutting. And we just actually had that situation. So sometimes that becomes a problem too, because then our, my team has to like backpedal and say like, no, that's not what we do. And yes, we can do that. So that, you know, it does sometimes cause issues. I would say for planner and venue to work the best is the planner needs to, uh, they need to develop a good relationship. And before the planner starts promising things to the client or telling the client, this is the way it's done, check with the venue coordinators. Every venue does different and say, hey, I have this idea. Can we do this? And talk through it with the people because then if the if the venue hears about it from the client and they're like, no, that's not what we do, then it it adds a level of frustration where they could have had a conversation, talked out how to work it out. That way the the venue's not caught off guard. Because that's what happens a lot of times the venue's caught off guard and they're like, What are you talking about? No, we can't do that. But if they would have had a conversation, then the coordinator could have said, Well, we could do it like this, and then they could come to a meeting ground before letting the client know. Yeah, and it's all about communication. And uh, I remember yep. early this year, um, and I think this this wedding actually is one of the ones that that's ending up being postponed. The coordinator it was at Wedgwood um, Galway Downs, and the coordinator called me and said, "You know, the bride's guest count has shifted. This is what she wants to do. Is this even possible? Is this something you can help facilitate? Is this something?" And it was it was requiring an element that you guys have uh, that you don't necessarily um, advertise that you have or or offer. And I was able to say, okay, well, you know what, if let's the three of us come together and I think if we do this, 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 and this, we can make it work. And that's, that's the key is just being upfront, being open, being honest and and communication uh, beforehand as opposed to just, well, yeah, they do this because they did it this once. Exactly. Because just because a venue does something once, doesn't mean they they can do it again because maybe it didn't work out. There's so many different things. Um, and so, you know, uh, and I come from a world, my old wedding planner boss, we push the limits on everything. So I come from that world of pushing limits. 
Um, but you know, I would just say, just check with the venue and, and have a, an honest conversation and everything will be, you know, and it'll work out. Yep, exactly. Well, we are at the end of our time. Jeez, Crystal, there's so much more. I, I, I get into these conversations with, with these, these people that, that I consider friends and, and colleagues that I've, that I've worked with so closely for so long. And I'm like, you know, 45 to 50 minutes just isn't long enough. So, you know, we, I don't even feel like we've begun to scratch the surface on, on I agree. what we can talk about. And, and now uh, you can go back and you can tell, like there's a couple members of, I'm not going to name any names just in case you're listening, but there's a couple members of your staff that I, I really want to have on, Alex. Um, so you can go back and, and say, oh, Alex, you need to, you need okay. to, talk, to talk to Mike and, and he needs to get okay. this happen. But we are now at the Fast Five. These are the world famous Fast Five questions. And these are the hot topics of the day. We are going to settle the controversies um, that exist. So, number one, sit down or buffet? Uh, sit down. Absolutely right. Uh, date night, dinner and a movie, or as long as I don't have to watch the kids, I don't care what we do? <laughs> the latter. As long yep. as I don't have to watch the kids, I don't care what we do. <laughs> yep, exactly, exactly right. Uh, reality TV, yes or no? Hell no. That is absolutely false. That is, ab- ab- of course, I, I, you, the second you I said no, can't. you knew that that was the wrong answer. I know, but I just can't. I just cannot. I, my wife is the exact same way, and and I am. Hallelujah. To- I am totally into reality TV, and so I'm I, like literally I last night. I'm like, can you go to bed so I can watch Survivor? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just can't do it. I cannot do it. Wine or margarita. Oh my God! I, I, both. both. Exactly. Exactly. Sometimes even together. Oh my God! Yeah. By by the way, I, mean, I I know it's not a a wine and margarita mix, but I love Wilson Creek slushies. Oh, they are really good. They are. They are. Wilson Creek's awesome. Let's just leave that there. <laughs> Stirring up some controversy <laughs> here now. No. No, I'll, they are. They're awesome. I. They are awesome. All the they are awesome. all the wineries are awesome, and they all have their 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 great they points. Are. Um, tacos, carne asada or chicken? Carne asada, absolutely right as well. Thank you, Crystal. This was a lot of fun, and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope the listeners enjoyed it. Thank you for spending some time with us. I know. I can't wait to see you and give you a hug. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's the that's that's the thing. Is not not just getting back to weddings, but getting back to seeing the people that you've, you've built a relationship that, that you enjoy hanging out with that you may or may not have stories that involve Montel Jordan and the Vegas nightclub. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, and, have and, a great day, Mike. And on that note, thank you again, Crystal. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Certainly some good stuff from Crystal. We want to thank her for being part of the podcast and thank her for sharing her story about how she got into the business. It's one of the things that fascinates me is the turns that, that people take to get into this, this industry. And some certainly, certainly some timely info regarding the current situation with the coronavirus pandemic and, and everything that's, that's going on. I know that I have been associated with Wedgwood uh, for a little over a year now, and I've seen that that they really do love weddings, and and I do too. You know, that's one of the reasons I got into this business. My twist and turns are I was in film production, um, working on independent movies and music videos, and and even worked in a post production facility for a little while, and it just didn't seem like a fit for me. And then I got into the special events world, doing lighting for a uh, production slash wedding company in Orange County, and then in did my first wedding. And the second I I was on my first wedding, I'm like this is this is what I want. This is this is what I love. This is what what I want to do for the rest of my life. And and some nineteen twenty year years later, I'm still doing it, and very lucky 
to be doing it. So we hope you enjoyed this episode. I know uh, Crystal and I certainly had a good time chatting. Crystal's one of those people that because she's no longer in the day-to-day running of the business, we don't get to see each other as often as we'd like. A lot of a lot of it is in passing. And so it, it, to be able to sit down like this and to to catch up and to learn more about her story is something that I really enjoyed. It's one of the benefits of doing this podcast. Now, uh, I know that this being released this week goes against what I originally said as far as release schedules, but things are changing. You know, we're getting such a good response and so many people want to be a part of this podcast that we decided, okay, we're going to do Wedcast weekly. So um, next week, we're going to have another episode. We've got uh, Dominica Preston Inzi of Dominica Beauty on on tap. And then, you know, we've got an episode with David Cutler, uh, Caitlin McCullough. We've got some great wedding professionals that we're going to be lining up to to tell you their story and to give you some tips and, and, and some guidance as you're going through the planning process or to to enjoy hearing their stories if you're a wedding vendor or if you just love wedding. So a l- little something for everybody on this. So we're going to be doing Wedcast Weekly. Uh, the Untitled Music Project we're going to do once a month. And I'm working on the quarantine episode for Cherish of La Rev. And we hope to have that out sometime next week. I'm actually hoping to record that either tonight. This is uh, Wednesday, May 13th, I believe. Either tonight or tomorrow. Um, we want to get that recorded so that we can get that in the the can as well, but we've got a great slate of webcast coming up. We're, we're, we've got a great slate of the Untitled Music Project, everything, and you can find us all at either csquaredradio.com, home of the C Squared Podcast Network. Uh, we also put these in our vlog section at csquaredevents.com, and then when you click on the vlog link, that will take you to there, and there you can find all of the webcast and all of the Untitled Music Project. Untitled Music Proge- Project is hosted at mixcloud.com slash C squared radio. And Wedcast is hosted on Anchor at anchor.fm slash Wedcast. So you can find us there as well. You can also check us as a company out on Instagram at C squared DJ, myself personally at DJ Mikey C squared on Facebook at C squared events and Twitter, believe it or not, we've, we've even got a Twitter handle and that's at C squared events. So hope you enjoyed this episode of webcast. We'll see you next week.